Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I'm Captain Jonathan Carter, Commanding Officer of the Coast Guard Cutter Stone, and I would like to extend a warm welcome to everyone joining us here today. As Greater Charleston, South Carolina, is officially designated as a Coast Guard Commander. Before we begin the official portion of our ceremony, I ask that you please silence all personal electronic devices. Military members will remain covered for the entire ceremony. During our national anthem, military members shall salute, and those not in uniform shall stand facing the flag with their right hand over their heart. A sequence of events is located inside your program to assist you in following today's ceremony. The designation of a Coast Guard community is a very special occasion that formally recognizes a community for its outstanding support of our United States Coast Guard. Presiding over today's ceremony will be the 27th Commandant of the Coast Guard, Admiral Linda Fagan. I would personally like to thank each of you for taking time out of your very busy day as we honor Greater Charleston and its relationship with our United States Coast Guard. I'd especially like to thank and recognize the following individuals. Please hold your applause till the end. U.S. Representative of South Carolina's 1st Congressional District, the Honorable Nancy Mace. Mayor of the City of Charleston, Mayor William Cogswell. Mayor of the City of North Charleston, Mayor Reggie Burgess. Mayor of the Town of Mount Pleasant, Mayor Will Haley. South Carolina State Senator, Senator Sean Bennett. South Carolina State Senator, Senator Brian Adams. South Carolina State Representative, Mr. Tom Hartman. The 26th Commandant of the Coast Guard, Admiral Carl Schultz. Vice Admiral Michael McAllister, U.S. Coast Guard retired. The Master Chief Petty Officer of the Coast Guard, Master Chief Heath Jones, and the Coast Guard Ombudsman at Large, Ms. Carol Jones. The Secretary of the South Carolina Department of Veter Veterans Affairs, the Honorable Todd McCaffrey. Charleston County Council Chair, Mr. Herbert Sass, Vice Chair, Ms. Jenny Honeycutt, and Council Member, Mr. Joe Boykin. North Charleston Councilman, Mr. Michael Bryan. Coast Guard Deputy Commandant for Material Readiness, Rear Admiral Laura Dickey. Coast Guard Operational Logistics Commander, Rear Admiral Carol List. Coast Guard Director of Government, Governmental and Public Affairs, Rear Admiral Will Watson. Coast Guard Chief Prosecutor, Rear, Rear Admiral William Dwyer. TSA Federal Security Director, Mr. David McMahon. Deputy Comptroller, U.S. State Department, Mr. William Davidson. Naval Information Warfare Center Atlantic, Captain Nicole Nigro and Mr. Peter Reddy. Commanding Officer, Coast Guard Cutter James, Captain Don Tertani. Commanding Officer, Coast Guard Cutter Calhoun, Captain Tim Simmel. Coast Guard Base Charleston, Captain Eric Jones. Coast Guard Maritime Line School, Law Enforcement Academy, Captain Randall Brown. Commander of Joint Base Charleston, the 628th Base Air Base Wing, Colonel Michael Freeman. Navy Nuclear Power Training Unit, Charleston, Captain Bree Kelly. Berkeley, Charleston, Dorchester Council of Government's Executive Director, Mr. Ron Meacham. South Carolina Director of Governmental Affairs, Mr. Mark Hendrick. Charleston County Administrator, Mr. Bill Tutton. Berkeley County Administrator, Mr. Johnny Crill. Dorchester County Administrator, Mr. Jason Ward. Dorchester School District 2 Superintendent, Dr. Shane Robbins. Lucy Beckham High School Assistant Principal, Ms. Karen Pickering. Representing Charleston County School District, Mr. Jeff Byerly. Representing the Charleston Metro Chamber of Commerce, Mr. Scott Barr. Charleston Chief of Police, Cheeto Walker. South Carolina Port Authority President and CEO, Ms. Barbara Melvin. Maritime Association of South Carolina President and CEO, Ms. Taylor Jack. Patriots Point Developmental Authority Executive Director, Allison Hunt. USS Yorktown Foundation Chairman, Chauncey Clark, and Rear Admiral Jim Flatley, United States Navy 
retired. Coast Guard Foundation Executive Director, Ms. Susan Lugo. Greater Charleston City Council, excuse me, Greater Charleston Council of the Navy League and past national pres president, Mr. James Offit. Representing Senator Lindsey Graham, Mr. Daniel Head, Mr. Aaron Strick Strickland, and Ms. Bailey Wright. Representing Tim, Senator Tim Scott, Ms. Caitlin El excuse me, Ilsley, and Ms. Catherine Hunter. Representing Congressman Jim Clyburn, Mr. Donald Trevon. Accompanying Congresswoman Mace, Dr. Laura, excuse me, Dr. Lori Katad, Ms. Lisa Kidwall, Mr. Noah Lindquist, Mr. Sean Brooklyn, and Ms. Gabrielle Lipsky. A special shout out to the Ombudsman, senior enlisted members, and crew members of many of our Coast Guard units here with us today, as well as a strong turnout from the Coast Guard retiree community here in the Low, the low Country and all federal, state, and local government officials and military service members and their families. I would also like to extend a special thanks to the Coast Guard Band, who will be performing today, and the Coast Guard Honor Guard, and the Lucy Beckham JROTC Honor Guard for their outstanding display of professionalism. The Great Charleston Council of the Navy League would like to recognize and thank the business sponsors that made this ceremony possible. Charleston Defense Contractors Association President, Mr. Gary Jaffe and his team. Atlas Tech President and CEO, Mr. Brian Miller and his team. Akima Business Development Director, Mr. Gabe Bell and his team. We also owe a special note of thanks to South Carolina Ports for their generous use of this facility and their expert team in arranging today's events. A special thank you to the Charleston County government team for sponsoring the application for this community to become a Coast Guard community and for their valuable support in today's ceremony. And finally, and I promise finally, a special thank you to the many volunteers supporting this event, including members from Coast Guard Auxiliary Division 12, Citadel Cadets, Coast Guard JROTC Cadets from Lucy Beckham High School, and our Navy League volunteers. Thank you all, and bravo, Zulu. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing through the presentation of colors, the playing of our national anthem, and delivery of the invocation. It is a military custom and tradition to provide military honors for all high-ranking dignitaries and flag officers. Musical honors will consist of four ruffles and flourishes, followed by the Admiral's March. Those in uniform should remain covered and follow my cues for rendering a hand salute. Now, Chairman, Charleston, County Council, arriving. Now, Commander, Coast Guard, District 7, arriving. Now, U.S. Representative for South Carolina's 1st Congressional District, arriving. Now, Coast Guard, arriving. Hand. Salute.
Mr. Two. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. That's not better. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to introduce Chaplain Cypher for today's invocation. Let us pray. Almighty God, you are a God of life and growth. Today we thank you for the growth and vibrancy of the greater Charleston area, particularly the Coast Guard and the maritime community. You have blessed our community with a rich and storied history, economical prosperity, and a flourishing maritime commerce. Yet more importantly than all that, you are a God of relationships and you have built wonderful partnerships and friendships amongst a community full of diverse backgrounds and walks of life. Today, we thank and praise you for the Greater Charleston's welcoming spirit to the servicemen and women of our Coast Guard. What a blessing to have such wonderful and harmonious relationship with the community that you live in and work for. Today, we invite your presence on this special occasion as the Greater Charleston area is officially designated a Coast Guard community. Bless our celebration and continue to forge this special bond between our Coasties and their community. Amen. Thank you, Chad. Now I invite Coast Guard 7th District Commander Rear Admiral Doug Schofield to introduce the Commandant of our United States Coast Guard. So uh, thank you, Captain Carter. Uh, it's really great to be here as the operational commander. I'll, I'll, just, I'll, I'll put the, uh, the short version. It's really great to be here because the men and women that serve it in the air, on the sea, and ashore love this community. That's why we're here. We're here because our future is brighter. And I'm certainly, uh, as the operational commander for the 7th District, which includes South Carolina, Georgia, Florida, and the Caribbean. I'm, uh, uh, I'm very honored to be here with you today. So thank you for taking your time of your day to honor this uh, greater Charleston area and this remarkable relationship with the United States Coast Guard. A special thank you to this distinguished guest uh, here in attendance. Obviously, we heard the names. Or, uh, this is an important event. As Captain Car Carter mentioned, the designation of a Coast Guard community is a very special occasion that formally recognizes the supports of the United States Coast Guard today more than ever. The Coast Guard greatly values our partnerships in this region, and day in and day out, Sector Charleston units demonstrate the attributes that have set us apart as the world's greatest Coast Guard. And that begins with our more than 1,600 dedicated men and women and their families, active duty, reserve, civilians, and auxiliaries assigned to these units. Our operations depend on the spirited, collaborative effort with our federal, state, and local partners in the greater Charleston area who are immensely helpful in the combined mission efforts. I thank you from the bottom of my heart there. We could not accomplish our missions without the stewardship and the support of the communities we serve in. Thank you. So now I want to introduce the Commandant of the Coast Guard, Admiral Linda Fagan. She is the 27th Commandant of the United States Coast Guard, oversees the global Coast Guard operations and over 78,000 active duty, reserve, and civilian personnel and auxiliary volunteers. She has served on all seven continents, from the snows of Ross Island, Antarctica, to the heart of Africa and many ports along the way. Armel Fagan has worked with both the international maritime organizations and international labor organizations on flags and port state issues. Admiral Fagan is the longest serving active duty marine safety officer and holds the distinction of being the Coast Guard's first ever gold ancient trident. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce Admiral Linda Fagan to the podium. Thank you. Right before I begin, it's seasoned, not ancient. 
So good afternoon and uh, welcome uh, one and all. We have, I, I am not going to go back through the list of all of the senior uh, elected officials, dignitaries, friends of the Coast Guard, uh, retirees, just uh, thank you all. Thank you for being here as we celebrate this community as a, as a Coast Guard uh, community. Representative Mace is particularly uh, just nice to have met you and have, uh, have you here celebrating with us. Um, I am really excited that we're going to honor Charleston today as a Coast Guard community. You know, the Coast Guard has proudly served in Charleston for more than 230 years, and it is an incredible place for our people to work and to call home. I've spent time today with some of the units here in the area and met a few of the families. They could not be a happier group of people. They love being here, and it's clear to me that the community also enjoys our presence here, and I thank you for that. The community has embraced and supported our Coast Guard workforce and their families, and it enables them to perform their duties in service to the nation to their greatest potential. And so, you know, as I face the back of the room, what you don't see is the stream of people from the community who are going on board the ship to see the ship firsthand and see what it is that our Coast Guard men and women do as ships like the Stone leave port and go and ensure our economic prosperity and our national security. So, you know, again, it is no surprise to see so many community uh, leaders with us here today, and especially the port partners in Charleston, members of the Maritime Association of South Carolina, all critical partners in what we do each and every day. The Charleston Defense Contractors Association and other colleagues from the other armed forces, our fellow Department of Homeland Security components and other federal agencies, thank you for joining us. You know, a warm welcome to uh, to receive here extends to our Coast Guard families as well who are here with us. As I say, our members in uniform go out and do difficult uh, work to support the nation, but they are only able to do it because of the support of their families. And so it's a privilege to uh, to have uh, family members here, here with us as well. I'd like to recognize and thank officials from the Charleston County Superintendent's Office and welcome the Coast Guard uh, children in the area schools, leaders from the medical community, state and local law enforcement, emergency managers, thank you. And I know we have many nonprofit organizations here today who steadfastly support the Coast Guard, such as the Palmetto Military Support Group, the USO, Yorktown Foundation, Patriots Point Development Authority, and the Navy League. In fact, the Navy League is everywhere the Coast Guard is. Uh, I, I have, cannot name an event or a location literally anywhere in the world where I have not seen the Navy League uh, representatives. So thank you for your special support of the Coast Guard. I'd specifically like to thank the Greater Charleston chapter of the Navy League for taking the lead in arranging today's event. Uh, we've got a project officer, many who have come together to make this event uh, what it is here today. It does not happen by accident, but for the, the initiative, leadership, and drive of the Navy League is why we're all here. And so again, uh, thank you, thank you very much. I would like to recognize one person uh, in particular who was really instrumental in bringing us all here today, and that's Jim Ramsey. Jim's a Coast Guard vet veteran, a bosun's mate, and he served as president of the Charleston chapter of the Navy League. He's who initiated the process to apply for Coast Guard community designation for Charleston and the surrounding communities. Unfortunately, Jim passed away before the process was completed, but I know his family is here in attendance, and today we will honor his memory, his initiative, his service, his commitment to not just the Coast Guard, but to Charleston, and so really, we have Jim Ramosini to thank for bringing us all here together today. I'd like to thank the Charleston County leaders that worked to make Jim's vision a reality by sponsoring the Coast Guard community application. Now, we have a number of young people with us here today, cadets. We have Citadel cadets. We've got a number of young people from our junior ROTC program. And as I see them, I know the future is bright. The talent that we have in this country who are coming forward with a propensity to serve, to join, and to step into service, not just in the Coast Guard, but any of our other military services, law enforcement, other service communities. The future is absolutely bright, and we see some of the best of that youth in the room with us here today. <clears throat> the cadets from Lucy Beckham High School, Coast Guard Junior ROTC. 
you know, it attracts students from across Charleston County. So it wasn't too many years ago we didn't have any JROTC programs. And over the last several years, we've been adding and expanding our JROTC program nationwide. It provides opportunity uh, for youth and young people who have a propensity to serve, to, to join and understand what service means, what it means to commit yourself to the nation. And we hope to inspire that service, whether it's in Coast Guard uniform or in another uniform, as these young members continue in their junior ROTC junior uh, journey. Cadets here represent the future of the Coast Guard and the future of our service here in Charleston. I said it this morning, and I'll say it again. We are committed to Charleston. We've been here a long time, and we are going to be here into the future. The opportunity for the Coast Guard, for the ships, the units, all that we have planned over at the site where we did the groundbreaking this morning is nothing but opportunity, not just for the Coast Guard, but for the community. And at the groundbreaking today, and with the construction and expansion of the base, it marks a new trajectory for the Coast Guard in South Carolina. The community will be home to new major cutters, logistics staff to maintain them, and services to support our Coast Guard families. The plans for the footprint over there are incredible, and I look forward now that we've begun the construction to see how it comes to life. It's so critically important that we commit to this work as we invest in the new cutters, boats, and aircraft. It's our people who are our most valuable resource. Those ships don't operate at sea 365 days a year. They need time in port for maintenance, for reset, and our families need time for that same reset and opportunity to spend time with their families to ensure that their family members have access to schools, medical care, child care, all the support that any of us need for our families. And Charleston absolutely rises to that support for us. As much as I can do from Washington to achieve the goals of family support and our frontline operations support, it really is the local communities that make a difference. They make a difference day in, day out, in the little things that our families value so much. And I thank Charleston and surrounding communities for that. I'm grateful to the community support of the Coast Guard. I offer you my heartfelt thanks for all that you have done and I know will continue to do to support our families as we continue to invest here in Charleston. I am really proud and privileged to be here today as we designate Charleston as a Coast Guard community and I am here to celebrate with you. Thank you, Semper Paratus. Now, Admiral Fagan will present Charleston County Chair, Mr. Herbert Rabinell Sess, with the proclamation officially designating Greater, Greater Charleston as a Coast Guard community. Chairman Sass will be accepting on behalf of all counties that make up Greater Charleston. Proclamation of the United States Coast Guard. Whereas the people of the community of Greater Charleston, South Carolina, have a rich history supporting the United States Coast Guard for over 230 years, serving as a port of operations for maritime enforcement authorities. And whereas the United States Coast Guard's presence in the community has grown and evolved with the cultivation of a mutually supportive and beneficial relationship between local Coast Guard units and the community of Charleston. And whereas the city of Charleston partnered with the foundation for Coast Guard history and the Coast Guard Combat Veterans Association to place a memorial plaque honoring the long shared history of the City of Charleston and the United States Coast Guard at Joe Riley Waterfront Park overlooking Charleston Harbor. And whereas Lucy Beckham High School in Mount Pleasant hosts one of the nation's few Coast Guard junior ROTC programs, the Charleston County School District enthusiastically supports this new program, and enrollment is expected to reach nearly 80 students of all socioeconomic backgrounds throughout the region in the next year. And whereas the Palmetto Military Support Group donated more than $30,000 to area installations to help support squadron events, family picnics, morale and welfare events, and other activities for Coast Guard service members and their family and whereas the Greater Charleston Council supports engagements between the Naval Sea Cadets and Operational Coast Guard units, building awareness 
of the benefits of Coast Guard service, and Greater Charleston City Council is also proud to host Sailor of the Year programs for local Coast Guard units, supporting ombudsmen who play critical roles in sharing information, particularly for deployable units, and whereas the friendliness and hospitality of the community of Charleston are reflected in the multitude of special events throughout the year and services including discounts from local businesses for Coast Guard members to honor their contributions to our nation. Now, therefore, I, Admiral Linda L. Fagan, Commandant of the United States Coast Guard, in accordance with Public Law 105-383, enact, enacted by the Congress of the United States and signed by the President on November 13, 1998, do hereby take great pleasure in proclaiming that the community of Greater Charleston, South Carolina is officially designated as a Coast Guard community, in witness whereof I have hereunto set my hand this the 26th day of January, the year of our Lord, 2024. stage, Representative Mace. Good afternoon, y'all. Uh, when I walked in the door this afternoon, uh, Admiral Fagan, I, I call this a power move. Some of you may not know this, but Admiral F Fagan is the first four-star um, and head of any of our service branches in our history. Um, and then I walk in, I see Barbara Melvin, who's head of this uh, the state South Carolina State Ports Authority. I was the first woman to graduate from the Citadel. We had kind of a trifecta uh, here this afternoon, and that's really awesome uh, to have that kind of history here today. And it's a true honor, regardless of uh, the chaos and mayhem of DC, when we're all working together at the state and local level here in Charleston, we do such an outstanding job. Uh, whether you are a Republican or a Democrat or an Independent, no matter who you are and where you're serving, we do a remarkable job, and that is reflected in all of our leaders who are here today and have been here with the Coast Guard, not just today, but yesterday and last night, working together, and that's reflected that everybody's here. Um, all of our mayors have been here, um, all of our council members, city and county, working together, and we ought to be really proud of that. You're not, don't be so proud of D.C. right now. That's a disaster, but at the local level, and I'm trying not to curse. I'm trying really hard not to curse right now, but we, they all worked really closely together, and uh, I want to say thank you to all of our leaders for what, what you all are doing here um, and keeping Charleston charm and keeping our industry and our defenses and our national security strong. Some of you may or may not know we have a rich maritime history here in Charleston, South Carolina. In 1790, Charleston became a cornerstone of maritime history. Alexander Hamilton established the Revenue Cutter Service, if you did not know, and among the inaugural fleet was the South Carolina and found its home in our charming harbor. We have lots of maritime stories. I love to tell the story of Robert Smalls, who was a slave, who commandeered a Union ship in Charles, I mean, a, a, a Confederate ship in the Charleston Harbor during the Civil War and gave it to Union soldiers. Um, and so we have such rich history, whether it's women breaking glass ceilings, African Americans, and black and brown in our communities. Uh, we have such a rich history, and I wish they taught more of it in our schools. And speaking of, since we're going to be close to uh, Black History Month in February, um, some people may not know, here in the 1st Congressional District, the first African American to ever serve in the U.S. House of Representatives was Joseph P. Rainey. He was from Georgetown at the time. Georgetown was in our district, and uh, he was the first one. And the last black man to serve before Reconstruction was also from our area, George P. Murray. And so we just have so much history to be proud of. And I'm really honored to be here today as Charleston is nationally recognized as an official U.S. Coast Guard community. We proudly carry forward a legacy that began with the vision of our nation's founding fathers. And more importantly, Admiral Fagan, I think uh, I have toured multiple cutters and ships. I've been out on the harbor with uh, Coast Guard, Coasties, with our servicemen and women in the Coast Guard. And I have to tell you, every single one with 100% all tell me that Charleston is their favorite installation and duty station. So we look forward to working with you and everyone in the Coast Guard to make sure it stays that way. Thank you and God bless.
Thank you, Representative Mace. I now welcome to the chair, to the, excuse me, to the stage, the chair of the Charleston County Council, Mr. Robert Ravenel Heston. Thank you, sir. It gives me great pleasure to be here today. Uh, as everybody has mentioned earlier, we do share a long time history with the Coast Guard here in Charleston. And it's especially important. It's been a big part of our, of our area. And we can't be more than excited how it's going to grow, uh, actually. And I have, my niece is married to a Coastie. So uh, I like that. And I have other cousins that have served. So I'm really happy about this. I'm pleased to accept this designation on behalf of the governments, businesses, nonprofits, and other organizations that make up the greater Charleston and Tri-County community. We eagerly supported the application for this designation, both to recognize the exceptional relationship we've had with the Coast Guard and its members over many years, but also as a way to recommit ourselves to continue to enhance this relationship as, as the Coast Guard grows its base of operations here in Charleston. A 2022 assessment estimated the economic impact of the military, including the Coast Guard in South Carolina. As the Coast Guard is centered here in Charleston, the Tri-County area is the primary beneficiary of more than $260 million in annual impact. We're also pleased to host other bases as well as Joint Base Charleston. This makes a great partnership. There are so many examples of this community supporting its Coast Guard. We're proud that they helped Charleston be a favorite assignment for the many Coast Guard members past and present. We humbly accept this designation. Let this just be the start of a mutually beneficial relationship between the Coast Guard and Greater Charleston, a relationship that we trust will grow in importance and value in the coming years. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sass. I would now like to invite Mr. Jim Offit from the Greater Charleston Navy League to the stage for some final recognition. Well, you heard the story about how this got started with uh, Jim Williams. Uh, but it takes somebody to carry that torch on. And so there is an individual who moved here to show it up became an action officer. People who in the government know what actions officers are, how they respond, and how their work is tireless almost 24-7. So Vice Admiral McAllister, would you please come forward? So thank you on behalf of Thank You League and all of us and all the people who have just talked about what a great community we have. And let me say personally, it's been wonderful working with you. Let me also say, never have I seen a flag officer become an action officer. So great. <laughs> do such a great job. Thank you very much. From the flag officer to Mike, uh, I just want to thank the many volunteers. Uh, Captain Carter mentioned uh, the uh, robust uh, turnout from volunteers. We had, I think, more than 60 volunteers, um, and so I just want to thank everybody for uh, for their extraordinary efforts to uh, to create a memorable ceremony and celebration today. Thank you. Cypher will now offer final vindication. Let us pray. Gracious God, again, we thank you for this special day. You call each of us to love our neighbors as ourselves. Thank you for inspiring this community to do just that for our Coasties. May you continue to bless this mutually beneficial friendship for many years to come. To the God of love, joy, and peace. Amen. Thank you, Chuck. 
Ladies and gentlemen, would you please stand as the band plays the Coast Guard song Super Cross, followed by the departure of the official party. Now, the United States Coast Guard, departing. Now, U.S. Representative for South Carolina's 1st Congressional District, departing. Now, Commander, Coast Guard District 7, departing. Now, Chair, Charleston County Council, departing. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the ceremony. Thank you again for joining us here today. Guests are welcome to join us for a reception in the area to my right, your left. The Coast Guard Cutter Stone will be hosting tours during the reception. Please take the opportunity to see one of the Coast Guard's newest, most capable cutters. Please see one of our tour guides in the back uh, for a tour during the reception. You may also notice that some local Coast Guard units stationed here in Charleston have set up displays around the reception area and we'll have representatives talking about the many missions that the Coast Guard conducts here in Charleston and missions conducted around the globe. Please take the opportunity to say hello as we bet you'll learn something new about our United States Coast Guard. Thank you again for your time and for showing support for our Coast Guard and our greater Charleston community. Simple Cross.